Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Craig Burley and Shaq Islop here in the studio. We'll kick things off at St. James's Park. What a great game it was between Newcastle and Manchester City. City would take the lead early, and from then on, you thought they might run away with it. But Newcastle came back in some style, making it 2-1 before the break. Trippier, they made it 3-1. But goals from Harlan and Silva meant it would finish 3-3 overall. For more on this, uh, let's welcome in, shall we? Jan Argafjortov to the show. Uh, Jan, you were at the game. How cool was that? Very cool. Hello from Newcastle, the football city, I have to say, <laughs> as a former borough. Now it was an unbelievable game. And, uh, and the boys have been at St. James's and I've played there many, many times. And I know when St. James's, the crowd get ballistic, that is maybe one of the best places to be. And the intensity of that game, after 1-0, as, as you were saying, Dan, you thought everybody, everything was gone. But those last 30 minutes of, of first half of, of Newcastle, I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, this is the reigning champion of England, of the Premier League, one of the best teams in Europe. Kylie, Kylie Walker is still walking around in Newcastle. He can't find his way out after that first half. Uh, so it was, now it was an entertaining game. Six goals by two teams who haven't conceded this season. So this was everything into this game. It's great, wasn't it? It was. The biggest compliment I can play, uh, pay Newcastle is I've rarely seen Man City in that first half in particular as flustered mm. as they were. Now, that's a lot down to Newcastle and a lot down to Man City. It's a bit of both. Their passing was shoddy. They get caught in possession. They couldn't handle the press. The decision-making was terrible. I mean, Phil Foden took a strike on in the first half and he had a simple ball across to uh, Again, er yeah. Erling Haaland. A simple, and, and I think he did something similar last week, and I think Guardiola took him off. Uh, and it was just the decision making. I mean, R Rodri giving the ball away, a Cancelo, and as you, you know, I think Shaka mentioned it, or was it Jan? Kyle Walker. I, I think I've really seen him been taken to the cleaners. Yeah. Like with Al Alan San Maximan, every time he got the ball was on fire. I thought Newcastle were terrific. Now, it was inevitable that City were going to change a gear, right? And it's hard to stop a pass like Kevin De Bruyne's, and it's, it's, it's hard with that physical presence of Erling Haaland. But City were way off their best, and Newcastle were terrific. I can only imagine the atmosphere there, Shaq. You've, you've it, played it. I mean, it, it must have been buzzing. I, I was there back in May, and the atmosphere oh, yeah. was... It reminded me of when, when I played there. It really... The fans have really responded to the new ownership and the football, more to the point, that they've been playing under, under, under Eddie Howe. And it is a, a very, it's an incredible atmosphere. Now, a couple of weeks ago, opening game of the season against another of my former teams, I remember Stuart Robson saying that he was disappointed with West Ham and the way they sat off. The sat off of Manchester City. Newcastle conceded early on and never even think about going into a shell, never, never seem to regress. They continue to press City very high up the park and were rewarded for it. The two centre halves sat too far off of Kyle Walker. Sam Maximan was just so happy to have to have space to run at Kyle Walker in, in, in the way that he did, and and in, in truth made Walker look very ordinary as, as a right back. And I don't think there are many people who can say that in the league. Not not just ordinary. He was just pushing the ball right. and and running past Kyle Walker. And and I, I don't think we've ever said that before. Um, in the end. Of course, it feels a lot worse, given that you're 3-1 up, um, that you dropped two points. Um, but if you, if you offered Eddie Howe a point beforehand, I think you would have taken it. It was an incredible, incredible game of football, one that you didn't want to see either team lose. So you kind of come away with thinking, yeah, it's, it's, it's about right. You think conversation, who was the man of the match? De Bruyne obviously is there, Maximum as well, so but Pope, Pope's, Pope was outstanding. Pope's got to be there, he made some massive saves. Pope, Pope was simply outstanding, and, and, and this is, 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 as we were talking before, this is one of the kind of tough aspects of being a goalkeeper, you're a man in the match, yet you, you come away conceding three. Um, but saying that, I questioned whether there was a need to sign Nick Pope this summer, whether goalkeeping, given Dubravka and, and his form towards the back end of the last season, was a priority. But this performance, I, I, I thought, was simply outstanding and establishes himself at, at that club going forward. And, and it, it, it earned Newcastle that point. Today. And looking at his influence on the game, it wasn't a perfect game from City by any stretch of the imagination. But I think if, if come the end of this transfer window, if Bernardo Silva is to go, I, I, 
I, I'm, I'm scratching my head thinking, right, there's midfielders that can come in, but apart from De Bruyne, who can play, who can take the ball and take it for a run like, like mm. Bernardo Silva? Who can pick that pass? Who can come and get it off the back, get turned, start, start attacks? He'd be, I mean, yeah, De Bruyne playing those balls, obviously, but Bernardo Silva, if he leaves, is going to leave a huge hole in that department for, for Manchester City. Uh, so that would be a concern for me, for Pep Guardiola. Unlikely, but not impossible, he goes before the end of the window. Yeah. The thing is, it's quite interesting to see how Newcastle is doing with all this money they've got. I mean, they are building a club, they're building a culture. I spoke to Eddie Howe after the game and he said, we follow how they build up the culture at Manchester City. Then it's easy to say, well, all that money, you can do this and that. But you, you don't buy culture with money. And I think this, this game... Not a game changer for Newcastle because after the game, the players, the manager talked about consistency. Now, now they have to keep this consistency, consistency what they did in the first half. They, they, they kind, of, kind of hammered Manchester City. So it's quite interesting to see. And, and I was thinking of you, Shaka, during the game because I, I, I was thinking of Newcastle goalkeepers. Uh, and uh, we all just waited for someone to do a, a mistake there. But Pope in goal... Wow. I mean, if you have that kind of if if you have that kind of goalkeeper, it's something to do with the security in your team. And you saw that today. They so trust him. They so trust him coming out there. There was a big, big chance. Erling Haaland gets one against one against him. Mm. He just saved it like it, like it, like he just do it for fun. And uh, no no stress in his actions. He's just there doing what he's doing. I mean, Gareth Southgate got himself a question who will make his, his first goalkeeper, I guess. The uh, interesting, One of the interesting things about Newcastle is for all the talk about when, when the new ownership come in is, well, oh, well, Mbappe and, you know, yes. all, all the nonsense. Yeah. It's never, never going to happen. It's, they've gone out and as far as I'm aware, they haven't really chased the superstars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've gone for solidity, you know, trippy, solid pro, target at left back who they signed, he didn't, I don't think he played, uh, Botman, Dan Byrne from Bright- Brighton, Joe Linton, who wasn't a signing but moved back into midfield and recreated himself, or, or, or Eddie Howe did as a, as a midfielder and did a, did a great job. Chris Wood, Paul Pengo, all very, very good professionals who are improving the team, rather than going out there and saying, Let's chase these fancy dans and then make a headline and it just sort of goes away after a couple of weeks because the team are still no better. They've so far gone about it a different way and it's looking very, very good. Uh, how would have Haaland have felt after this match, Jan? You mentioned the fan, obviously, a couple of big saves, hit the post, got a goal. I think you would say after three games, you have three goals, you, you're happy. But as, as Craig was saying as well, you had this Phil Foden situation again. Uh, I will always think of that as a striker. I want Foden then to play me. I, I want him to do that. And, and I was sitting, as you do uh, at the press at St. James's, you just sit 10 meters behind uh, the, the, the managers. And when Foden didn't play him, uh, I mean, Guardiola had a body language of, a, of a, a maniac. I mean, he was so mad. And they were discussing last games that he was Foden took off because that is not the way Pep Guardiola wants to play. Having said that, I think that it takes time to uh, to, to find him 100%. But though these goals and, and the game today he was much more involved. Uh, remember last Saturday he was involved eight times. Two passes included one kickoff. Uh, but he was much more involved today because the game, of course, was much more open. But I think they will find him. And you were talking about the Lewandowski who score goals for fun. If he keeps fit, if he plays the games that he's supposed to play, he will score a lot, a lot of goals because there were so many chances today, he could end up with three or four. What a game at Ellen Road. Leeds United thoroughly deserving of a 3-0 victory over Chelsea. Uh, Taking a look now, what that means is that Leeds... Uh, currently sitting third in the table, two wins and a draw. What a start for Jesse Marsh's first full cha- season in charge of Leeds. Uh, Gab and Jan are with us. But Craig, I want to start with you. How good were they today? Very, and the uh, high energy tempo pressing, the kind of football mentality that, that uh, Jesse Marsh is selling, I, I think it's perfect for Leeds. It's, uh, it's not a team with any, they've got good players, but any real big stars. Obviously, Phillips and uh, Rafinha have gone. Uh, 
a couple of American lads and others have come in. And I think what his rhetoric, Jesse Marsh, will be listened to more by these kind of players, Tyler Adams, obviously. Yeah. And they've got a lot of energy and they're quite young and they follow this plan well. So Chelsea had to expect that. They had to expect that Leeds at home, pressing high, pressing quick, lots of energy, getting around them. They had to expect that was going to happen. Now, you can't legislate for, for the, the mistake that the goalkeeper made, but that being said, that wasn't the only part of the game that was faltering for Chelsea. And he can have all the excuses he wants, Thomas Tuchel, about the plane didn't come yesterday to take my players up. So that's not ideal preparation. I understand that. But why the hell he brought it up? Because it's got nothing to do with the way the players perform. It's got nothing to do with Edward Mendy making a mistake. And this was all about Leeds, a team who I think a lot of us think or thought before the start of the season, it could be a tight one again for them with relegation, and it might be, but this is a huge shot in the arm. Don't forget they were 2-0 two nil, two nil up last week at Southampton yep. and, and, and lost two goals. That was a body blow for them, so they've had a response. And I think the player personnel that he has will listen to what he's saying and his message. And I think that's very important for a manager. Uh, let's, we'll discuss that a little bit later on. But as you brought up the quote, let's uh, confirm what Thomas Tuchel said after the game. Everything that can go wrong did go wrong. It started yesterday. We had no plane to arrive, so we came on the bus. The players could fly, but for the coaching staff, it was a long ride on the bus. It continued today. So there was a plane. There just wasn't enough seats on that other plane. Look, Craig mentioned it. Why even, why even go there? Why even bring that up? Yeah. You talk to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I am the plane uh, responsible. <laughs> no, uh, You're the Thomas Tuchel no, defender. I know you it, love Tuchel, uh, yeah, but yeah, it just does seem ridiculous to even go there uh, when you've been I, I beaten so easily. Yeah. Now, fair point, Dan, and I think that in in two in one week now, you've seen both Chelsea where they are. They, they should have won against Tottenham, and they were deservedly losing today. I felt that Thomas Tuchel, after the game, could have given maybe one compliment to Leeds United, because that game, the energy game, the intensity of the game, as Craig was talking about, was excellent. The goal's good take, well taken. I, I hate uh, modern goalkeeper who forget that is an old-fashioned thing to sometimes kick the ball up in the stand but that's another discussion so I don't like that that is uh, uh, as a leader I always admired Tuchel as a leader because he he showed in Paris he showed also in Dortmund that he can uh, can handle those kind of situations but talking about the plane today that is just silly and the the wise people I don't, I'm not talk, I'm not I don't know who he's speaking to uh, I consider myself quite wise uh, and when I listen to that I, I heard just a, a defensively coach who don't want to praise Leeds United for a, for a, for a great win and that is not worthy uh, Chelsea Chelsea should say when they are down and they were 3-0 down and great taking goals so deservedly losing today against Leeds United Yeah well, what's interesting Shaq, the, the quote that Jan's alluding to when he said look you know this isn't about giving credit to anyone this is our fault Yeah and and mm. Listen, that, that's fine if you're speaking to your players and, and your fan base. But I, I, I think there's, there's also an understanding within the game that you lose graciously. And, and especially when you lose as heavily as, as Chelsea did today. And, and Leeds, Leeds were deserving. There, there's no denying that. This was not about missed flights. This was not just about an underperforming Chelsea. This was about a Leeds who recognised that and, and took full, full advantage of, of, of Chelsea's weaknesses. That being said, if you're that poor, you, you have to address that. If, you're, if your only response is, we were that poor, then as manager, you have to account for that in, in some way, in, in some way more than the plane didn't, didn't pick up coaches up yesterday. I mean, which... No, I picked, oh, yeah, I didn't get the coach. didn't get the coach, which, the which makes absolutely no sense to me I, 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 at all. So <laughs> it, it just, it, it really just, it really just kind of grates and, and feels, um, it, it feels disingenuous and leans into a, a, a feeling around spoiled football and football, or football coaches, more to the point this time around, in today's game. Uh, Gab is with us, who very rarely leaves London, and if he does so, it's on his private jet. So can you understand? He could have taken the coaches. <laughs> Gab could have taken the coaches. <laughs> what, what's it, three hours in a coach, Gab? You would turn your back on that straight away. Uh, yeah, without question, especially because, you know, I'm sure it wasn't 
one of those luxury coaches with a toilet in the back and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, tables yeah. and video <laughs> screens or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm expecting, I think it was one of those converted yellow school buses with Tuchel rattling alarm. Right, look, I, I, I think what he, I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the bat, doubt because oh. I'm the original Tuchelista here. I think right now, as you've probably seen between last week and this week, the guy is wound tighter than a drum. Uh, he's had to do double duty because everybody's left the club, the club uh, in terms of front office, leaving just him and Todd Bowley, who, you know, uh, until very recently was, was a baseball man. And I, I think he's the kind of guy who he lays out very specific plans, and then when there's a tiny hiccup in his plan, then he kind of loses it, and, and it has a knock-on effect. And I, I, I agree with the boys. I mean, he, you know, he, he talked about how they should have moved the ball faster to break the press and stuff like that, and, and that way you can allow for individual errors because you create opportunities at the other end too. But, but ultimately, I think he knows that credit should have gone to Leeds United for playing the way they did, and I think it infuriates him um, that you know, they knew the way Leeds were going to play, and they weren't able to take the necessary countermeasures. And I think people are going to go and blame Connor Gallagher and Jorginho again. Yeah, it's not just them in the middle of the park. It, issues at the back, and I think as well, issues up front um, were with, with Sterling and Havertz, where, you know, at some point you have to wonder, is this a strike partnership that will work for me in, in different types of games, including this one? They're just not going to contend with those two up front. Sterling will get his fair share. Havertz will have his moments. We've seen that in his Chelsea career, you know, champions goal in the Champions League final. There's no doubt in his talent, but there's doubt in his consistency. And they won't they won't contend unless they get themselves a natural striker. They haven't got the personnel who are clinical enough uh, well, to be able to get enough goals. In my opinion. Yeah, they'll have game, they'll play way better than they played today, of course. They maybe even have a lot of performances like last week against Tottenham. But if you're not finishing off all that good play on a regular basis, it wears on you. Mm. It wears on you on a daily basis because you think, I can't keep playing like this. Obviously, today's an anomaly for them, hopefully. You can't keep playing like this and not killing teams off. So you watch Chelsea in the next week or so, whatever it is, 10 days, they're going to ramp up to try and get somebody in that can finish it off. No idea if it's going to be a Bamiyang or whoever right. it's going to be, but they're going to have to, in my opinion, they're going to have to go and get somebody or it'll be a long few months till January. At the end of the transfer window, are we going to see both Fofana and Aubameyang in a Chelsea shirt, Gab? I think right now there's possibly a greater chance of, of Fofana, though given how things are at Leicester, I think it's going to be really tough for, 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 for Leicester to, to give in. Um, I think the thing with Aubameyang is Barcelona, I don't believe, are going to want to uh, move both Aubameyang and, uh, and Depay. I think it's going to be one or the other, and I think it's looking more Depay right now uh, to move. And, as far as Alba's concerned, the other noise coming from, uh, from Chelsea is that, oh, look, but we do have that striker that, that Craig talked about. It's Armando Brogia, who was, who was unavailable, injured uh, in this game. That's all fine and good, but, um, you know, to, to think that I, I, what would worry me is Alba and Brogia are very different profiles of, of strikers. So I'm even wondering is how muddled are, are the ideas here? Mm. You know, how clear is the thinking in terms of, if you do bring in another forward, what kind of profile do you want? Do you want an Alba or do you want an Armando Broja type uh, centre forward? I, I think, uh, to go to that point, Gab, I, I think it's, it is muddled and I think it's muddled out of desperation because, uh, because Werner didn't work, because Lukaku didn't work, because uh, other players have been inconsistent at best and we've seen them in flashes. I think now it's like systems and way we're playing is almost kind of half out the window. It's like, get me something. Yeah. Right. Just get yeah. me something that can get me through to the next phase and then we'll figure it out from there. That's kind of, that's how right. I feel where Chelsea are right now. But I think it's, it's more well, than just the strikers. I, I felt that the entire transfer window has felt that way. That they just, whenever somebody else seems to be linked with a player, Chelsea tried to hijack the move. And, and so it's not just a thinking or around the feeling of, of Lukaku and, and, and Strikers and Werner before, before, before now. It's, it's just everything since, since this 
in, in, in this window, maybe it is because of the, the front office departures that, that Gab is talking about, but it just, it just doesn't feel right with Chelsea. Uh, yeah, but, but we, yeah, we just see the managers, they use in the media as well to speak to someone. I mean, what is Tuchel doing today is that he's speaking to the guy who was responsible for that plane and logistic that he loves. He speaks to them. Uh, you have manager, he's speaking to nobody helps me here. I'm all on my own and blah, 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 sitting in your golden kefish. What's that in uh, when you are in golden prison, so to say? Uh, that, that's what you do. And, and the thing is, with, with, you see that with Nagelsmann as well. You saw it in the whole preseason. Sabitzer has been so good. Finally, he has arrived. Yeah. After one year, he has arrived because you one, one year ago said that that was a special player. He wanted to get to Bayern Munich. So the manager, they're using also the media to speak internal thing. And that's what I think Tuchel is doing now. He's putting pressure on people to get him something. And the something now is that striker. You can do all the, the, the glory systems of the world and all, all the complicated systems of the world. But you need someone to just take off some of that the steam to get you that goal out of nothing and they don't have that player Chelsea at the moment and they, they suffer for that but they didn't lose today uh, against uh, Leeds United because of that I'm just saying it in the longer term uh, Chelsea then very much at the wrong end of the table not quite as wrong as Manchester United who of course are in action on <laughs> Monday as they play host to Liverpool at Old Trafford uh, Gab of course we saw this uh, this fixture postponed in the past because of protests against the owners suggestions that there could be protests once again ahead of the clash on Monday could we be in a similar situation that we were last year Well, look, uh, certainly the fans are no more enamored uh, of the Glazer as, as, they were, as they were last year. And I think adding fuel to the, to the fire here, of course, is, uh, is once again Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who you know, oscillates between being a Chelsea fan and a United fan, sort of popping out, <laughs> uh, one of the richest men in the world, uh, popping out and saying, oh, look, you know, oh, sure, you know, why not? Uh, but we're always open to possibilities. Uh, so that ratchets up the, the, the pressure further. Um, I'm not even going to get into Elon Musk and what he said. Of course, he walked that back. <laughs> but, you know, for three hours, that did have an effect or could have had an effect on the share price. Uh, so, yeah, so now's a great time to, you know, if you're of that bent, to go and, and turn the screws further on the Glazers. The, the whole world is watching you. And obviously, you know, it's, it's been a mess. It's been a cluster mess until now. Um, and I think it's almost obfuscated the fact that Liverpool haven't had the best start to, to the season either. I, I think it should be pretty obvious if, if, if people get on the pitch, um, if the match is postponed, you know, there is a legal concept, which, which is that you as the home team are responsible for the behavior of your fans. Uh, it's called failure to control your fans. And, you know, why we think that the Glazers should be able to control their fans is a whole other issue. But um, I, I think what Klopp said, I think he's right in the sense that I think that's how the Premier League are going to take it. They have obligations. They have obligations to broadcasters. They have obligations in terms of, of security. And uh, so I think this is one to monitor very, very closely. And I think United will be doing everything they can to make sure that, you know, if there is a protest, it's civil but it can't disrupt the match. A lot more reaction to what happened this weekend then on the latest edition of Gab and Jules podcast, which is available to listen to on Monday. Barca got their first win of the season, defeating Real Sociedad by four goals to one. They were made to work hard in the first half, but the introduction of Ansu Fati really changed the game. He was fantastic, setting up Dembele, Lewandowski, and then scoring himself as Xavi's team take all three points away from San Sebastian. Yeah, they run out of steam, uh, <clears throat> Real Sociedad. The changes were the difference. The, the end product was the difference. Dembele in the first half coming in off the right, lashing it over the bar. This time on the left-hand side, when it comes to him, he's controlled. He finds that far corner. I said to you a couple of weeks ago, though, Dan, I, 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 my personal opinion is the front three or whatever it is, we're not, when, it, when, it's all, when it's all comes out in the wash, will yeah. be, in my opinion, Ansu Fati, Lewandowski and one other. Right. Uh, you know, it was Torres today. Last week it was Dembele and Rafinha. I think, and we just saw it with a couple of his touches and his finish, I, I think arguably he's got the better end product out of all those players, Lewandowski apart. It's interesting, Shaq, because we thought, well, maybe it'll be Rafinha and Dembele mm -hmm. with Lewandowski. 
But everything we've seen from Ansu Fati as he's come off the bench last week and indeed, of course, this week has been brilliant. Without question, Craig was talking about it in the first half that if David Silva were wearing a Barcelona shirt, you feel there'd be better chances for, for Robert Lewandowski. When coming to this season, you were looking for that service from, from wide areas and discussion was who would those wide men be? But you bring Ansu Fati in to play a little bit closer to Lewandowski. He shows the creativity throughout, those little flicks, those little touches, just to unlock defences that Barcelona were lacking. They were relying on athleticism down, down the wide areas and service, which was largely poor to Lewandowski. But then you just bring in someone with, with this kind of vision, this kind of touch, and Lewandowski's instincts in, in and around the box. And, and that ultimately made all the difference. Ansu Fati always has a manner about him where he just seems to be enjoying playing. There doesn't seem to be any pressure well, on it. if he'd had the amount of injuries this young man's had, you would be enjoying yeah. playing. And, and I think maybe that's one of the reasons that he is getting limited game time in the first couple of games is because maybe Xavi's thinking, right, let's just bed him in slowly. We have got options now. We've got plenty of options in that front line with, with, with Torres. Gavi can play up there. Rafinha, Dembele, Obama Yang. Memphis Depay is still there and on the bench, he's not gone yet. So there's loads of options, you don't have to rush the young man. Uh, but I think ultimately he will be one of the main assets that they have. But listen, that was a big performance because obviously uh, Madrid got the, uh, Real got the, the job done yesterday, very comfortable in the end. They had a disappointing game last week against Rayo Barcelona. And the first half was kind of nip and tuck, 50-50, could have gone either way. But really, as the second half went on, they took the game by the scruff of the neck and the manager made the changes at the right time. And it was a great result for them. And of course, an added bonus, Lewandowski getting off the mark and then some. And then some, yeah. And, and, and that, that was important, given what we saw last week, some of the frustrations after getting the ball in the back of the net, that being disallowed, and then nothing happened. And then all eyes, again, on this Barcelona starting eleven, the changes that were brought in, a lot of the discussion around around who can play, who's, who's been signed and, and who's not. And now the discussions this week will be about Lewandowski, will be about Ansu Fati and the way forward for, for Barcelona. Still a lot of work to do with, for them financially, but at least this changes a lot of that discourse. We knew exactly what Lewandowski was bringing to this team and, and you saw it. That instinct in, in and around the box. Have some of the players step up in the way that, that Fati has today, that we know that Gavi and Pedri have done in the past. And all of a sudden, this is looking like the Barcelona that it promised to be. I don't think if Robert Lewandowski hadn't scored, he'd have been sat at home tonight in Barcelona. <laughs> no, going, oh, he, I, he would have been <laughs> all I mean, upset. If he sat there and he's so far gone, oh, I can't sleep, I'm doubting myself. <laughs> doubting myself, I can't score. I mean, he's just going to get... I mean, we've talked about it on the show here. Benzema probably and him being the two players, obviously, in that position. You know... Who's going to get the most goals? <laughs> Who knows? But he is going to get a heart full of chances. Yeah. So when you look at what's around him, uh, the talent, the potential for the chances to be created, yeah, he's going to get a lot of goals. Let's get some reaction now as Gemma Soler caught up with Robert Lewandowski and Xavi. We're next to Xavi Hernandez. Congratulations on this first win of the season. It was, though, a tough one. Thank you so much. Yes, of course, uh, it's a stadium very difficult, so we suffered a, a little bit in the first half. When we controlled the game, when we had the patience, uh, when we had the, the, the tempo to control, especially in the second half, so we make the difference. Uh, re yes, I'm, I'm satisfied, I'm happy for the win. It's always difficult to win Real Sociedad, especially at home. So I'm, I'm really happy for the players because we are training so well, we are uh, training hard, and this is the way. I think we had to control more. Uh, the, the game in the first half, but the second half we played really well. You decided to play with three center defenders in the back. It's quite brave and risky system. And in the first half, maybe it was a little bit difficult for the team. But did you have this patience to keep the system and then eventually things worked well? Yes, we were very brave because this, uh, the system is with two strikers, so it was enough with, with three in the back. So, But then the, the wingers have, had to had to work a lot for the team in defence, especially the, the defensive midfielder, Frankie, uh, first Gavi, then, then Pedri. So we play so well, we play so well. I think uh, 
Yes, uh, of course we can change the system, but today was a very good day because they play with two strikers. After the deceiving uh, draw at the Camp Nou, you said something like that your players, uh, you felt that they have too much pressure on them and you had to take out that pressure so they can play their, their quality. Do you think you managed to do that this week and it showed after the, in the second half especially? Well, it's easy to, to say when we, when we win, no? But okay, uh, we had the responsibility today to play well, to, to win uh, in, the, in very difficult stadium and, and we did it. We did it, so this is the, the way, so really happy for them. And this is Robert Lewandowski scoring twice, being the man of the match on, on his birthday. Yes, especially <laughs> with his birthday, but he's Robert Lewandowski. He makes the difference for the team, not only scoring, so uh, he's a very good solution in the building up. He controls the, uh, the game, the tempo, the possession. Very good, very good play, top player for us. And one last name, Ansu Fati, is such a special player. It's going to be difficult for you to choose the, the forwards. It's difficult, of course, because we have we had uh, we have many possibilities. But this is the way. Uh, if he play 30 minutes, 10, uh, 45, 90, Ansu play really well. He make the difference also for the team. So I'm happy for him. We are here with Robert Lewandowski. Congratulations and on the win and on your birthday. Thank you very years. much. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm very proud of of the game of the, of my teammates. Uh, of myself, of course, because that uh, was for me the first goal for Barcelona, and uh, we won 4-1. I think that the second half we played very well, we scored a lot of goals. That means that uh, every day, every week, working on uh, my side, of our side, I'm pretty sure that in the next games, next weeks, uh, for us will be even better. So it was a little bit disappointing, the opening game in the Camp Nou, no goals. I don't know if you felt that this team has a lot of pressure for the new signings, for the, the excitement of, uh, and, and you need a little bit of, of that, of pace, of patience and things will work well. No, this is football. So you have to stay, you have to keep calm and you have to be focused of your of your performance. So of course that was the first game we we didn't win, uh, but um, the first game, the first weeks that you know that was a lot of situation about the club, about the players also, and that wasn't easy to prepare it for the first game like normally. But now we know it. What, uh, what we should to play, how we should to play, and every week, every training session, uh, we, we, we keep going, looking forward, and I'm pretty sure that even next game, next weekend will be for us um, much more better as today, first half, for sure. You changed the system today, three in the back, it was a little bit difficult in the, in the first half, but then you managed to turn in and, and to get this big result. Yeah, in the first half, we, we built it up a little bit too, long, uh, too slowly, and that was our problem, we didn't create the space, and uh, sometimes we have to be patient. We have to be patient, waiting for for the space, waiting, change the side from the one side to second second size, uh, playing better, just to pass and waiting. And uh, I know that we have so many young players that they want to try to directly to create a situation. But sometimes you have to be smart, you have to be patient and waiting for for, for our chance. And second half we play like that, so we we see the difference between the first and second. And in the, in the next game that will be for us challenge to playing from the first minute like that, like in second half till 19. And that uh, that for sure is uh, for us the big step forward. You play next to a lot of uh, young talented players, I don't know which has impressed you the most, Pedri and Sufati or what? Oh, everyone, you know, everyone has so huge uh, performance and I know that uh, they have to be already on the top level, even that they are so young and uh, expectations are very high, but uh, they know since they play already since um, months, years on, the, on this level in Barcelona that I know that uh, this mi mix with the experienced player that helped them also to be better and playing uh, as a player on the top level. Gemma with us now. Gemma, it's interesting, we were saying earlier on in the show when you take a look at the lots of new signings that have been made, Ansu Fati was the real one who made a difference today. Yes, uh, it was, but if he goes back to his best and, and he showed that he might be there, it would definitely be the, the, the best new signing that Xavi can have because he has everything that this Barcelona needs. He's got the DNA. He, he knows what he has to do. He's such a special, talented player. He's something uh, different. So if he can go back to that level before that uh, injury, that four surgeries he, he had to go through, uh, for sure he's going to be the, the next uh, best signing. And for sure, probably uh, Barcelona, they don't need to sign another forward. That is something they are uh, planning in case they, they finally get rid of uh, Memphis Depay or, or they sell Memphis Depay and, and Obameyang. It was such a great night for, for Ansu Fati uh, and he 
he was already uh, great the minutes he played against Rayo Vallecano. Uh, so uh, there was a little bit of concern because he didn't play any uh, minute with uh, uh, Spain uh, during this summer in the Nations League. So it was a little bit of concern, rumours uh, regarding his knee and his uh, fitness. Well, he proved today that, that he's that special player and, and if uh, injuries respect him, he can go back to and try to succeed with Barcelona. Gemma Soler, as always, uh, thank you very much for your time. La Liga, of course, continues next weekend here on ESPN+. Bayern Munich winning by seven goals to nil. Uh, you take a look at the top of the Bundesliga. They have won three out of three. And, of course, with Dortmund's collapse yesterday, the only team to have a 100% record after three games. Uh, never has this happened, Jan, in the history of the Bundesliga. We've been in a situation uh, where a team has scored 15 goals in the opening three games. <laughs> well, it's a fantastic Bundesliga weekend. The guys who were responsible for the branding of Bundesliga, they must be hiding somewhere in Munich looking for the Bayern Munich celebration party after three rounds. So you have Saturday, Dortmund 2 0 up, and you think, well, they will have nine points, won't they? Yeah, 87th <laughs> minute, and then 2 1, 2 2, 3 2 against mighty Werder Bremen. And then Leverkusen at home against uh, uh, Hoffenheim. Everybody think that Leverkusen finally they will be up there, including our own Derek Ray. Yes, of course, losing 3 0, then you just know that Leipzig is going to. Le to Berlin, playing in Union Berlin, will they lose? Of course they will, 2-1. So people think, oh, excitement. Then Bayern Munich go to Bochum. They lost the last year. This is a tricky away game. And then winning 7-0. I mean, we, we, we have a joke about it, but, but it's nearly like you start crying. I mean, this is, this is so embarrassing. And this is nothing to do with Bayern shouldn't be getting better. They have done a fantastic transfer window. Uh, Sadio Mane is now the darling of the whole German uh, football league. But, I mean, 7-0. This is the other teams, Leverkusen, Leipzig and Dortmund. They should be uh, embarrassed of themselves. They haven't done anything to improve themselves. And I hope, I hope now they win 34 games uh, by Munich and never concede a goal. So maybe the other teams understand that they have to have to work harder and stop saying that Bayern's stealing every player. So don't let them have them then. RB Leipzig gave them their coach when they were second in the league. They gave them their coach, Julian Nagelsmann, Upa Meccano and Sabitzer. All the best German Bundesliga. Imagine the people in the hotel room next door to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this <laughs> about? Who's, who's in the room with that man? <laughs> 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 reception! There's <laughs> <laughs> an angry man up here. Well, there you are. 7 1. PSG are going to win the title. 100%. Told you that. Uh, after, <laughs> after three games. Uh, Gab, I suppose this was exactly the response that Gautier would have wanted after all the soap opera and all the rumours and all the liking of tweets that happened over the last week. No question about it. Um, and, you know, you see Neymar there. I know the focus is on Mbappe and the goal of Messi. You know, Neymar, by the way, uh, was it a hat trick of assists and two goals he scored in every game this season? Um, proving perhaps some of the, the Neymar haters uh, are wrong. Maybe oh. uh, rumors of his demise are a little bit premature. Um, but equally, I have to say this Leal kind of made it easy for them. Paulo Fonseca, their manager, uh, tweeting out just a few minutes ago, I retweeted it, um, that, oh, it was a difficult game for us tonight. Um, yeah, you think? I, I think against a team that's very open, the way the way Leo played, that's the way Fonseca plays, they, 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 they try to push up, take the game to the opposition. You know, you're asking for trouble um, in a game like this. And, uh, uh, and yeah, we saw how those three just ripped them apart. I, I would hope that things will get more difficult for Paris Saint-Germain a little bit along the same lines of what uh, Jan said about Bayern. Uh, well, keep hoping. Uh, meanwhile, in Italy, here are the results from this weekend. Some of the standout ties into that 3-0 victory against Spezia. Meanwhile, Napoli looked good, didn't they, in their 4-0 win against Monza. Defending champions Milan were held to a 1-1 draw away against Atalanta. Uh, what would you like to talk about, Cam? 
Well, we can talk about how uh, Inter firing in all cylinders, the Lula partnership, Lukaku and Lautaro, uh, looking really, really good, almost as if he hadn't been away. I don't know, where did he go for the for those 12 months in between? I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure where he went. Um, uh, Napoli, uh, Kvara Chelia, remember the name, it's difficult, so that's why he just goes by Kvara. Scored an absolute peach of a goal, a seaman unstoppable again. But he's young, he's Georgian. Farcelia, he's definitely a special player. And uh, Milan got a bit of an awakening against Atalanta. I thought Atalanta probably created the better chances in the course uh, of the game. Tough place to go. Um, and, uh, and maybe in the end, Milan, again, showing character to get a point. Extra time is next. Uh, Jan is back from his hotel room, uh, plus the boys to answer some of your questions. Welcome in then to the, the latest edition of Extra Time. We'll Thank you always music, yeah. for your like questions. The, it was like the penalty. Uh, like the penalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, taking it too far. But, <laughs> Craig with us, Shaka in the studio. We're worried about uh, the angry the, the 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 Jan's of, of yeah, Jan's hotel because there's been yeah, a lot of shouting. Yeah, they called me from the reception. They said, how is your missus and why is she so uh, glad for the Bundesliga when you are so against it? Right. So it's all sorted. Okay. It's all sorted in Newcastle. Right, good stuff. Uh, meanwhile, Shaka, it's interesting because I'm used to him watching the golf when we're doing the show. Right. Uh, what? what? That's a slur. <laughs> How is that a slur? <laughs> that is a slur. It's not a slur. It's not a slur. It's true. But it's not a slur. It's a true. It's true. You'll find there's nothing. That monitor behind the camera I'm pointing at. There's nothing on there. No, no. But during during some golf tournaments, you've been known to watch the golf. Well, yeah, we're what, doing what, the show. No. <laughs> Yes. You talk about it. You, you talk about it on here. <laughs> yeah, that's not right. That's not right. Only when it's the masters. Oh yes, yeah. All the travelling, all the illness. <laughs> when it's golf, I'll just go in the app. I'm going to PJ Tour app, find out who won the golf. Uh, so, but what was unique today is that it was Shaka who was watching something yeah. when he should have been concentrating on the it show. Well, not, but he did oh. have the game on. I, I watched. I watched oh. both. What were you watching? Both games kicked off simultaneously. What were you watching, Shaq? You must Amherst women away to Fairfield. And why is that a big deal? Because my daughter's playing for you, Mass Yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, and they lost. Uh, no, good. they won the lot. They won. They conceded two in the last ten minutes of the game. Oh dear. So then, at one stage, Shaq is like, "Oh, she's been substituted off now." And Craig shouting in the background, going, "Like a father, <laughs> not putting the proper shit." <laughs> <laughs> Just that, Dad. Can't even do the net the full show. That's it. So how come she's not a goalie? Oh no, I wasn't. Nah. I'm, I'm delighted. One of, one of my daughters played in gold for a bit, and I hated every moment of it. Right. So, but this one, nah, imagine how the Newcastle fans felt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to concentrate uh, on your work. <laughs> I was. Oh. Okay. Uh, where do you think Newcastle finished the season in the league table after their performance today against City? You're in Newcastle, Jan. It seems that we start with you. Well, after that performance, everybody in Newcastle will have them in the Champions League. Uh, I don't think so. I think I, I agree with Eddie Howe who said after the game, now it's all about consistency. Uh, you can do, but the good thing for them and the good thing for a coach, he can just go into the dressing room and say, you do this against the best team in England, one of the best teams in the world, you do it against Pep Guardiola, then there is no excuse for doing that. Uh, but it was a fantastic game and th this crowd at St. James's will give them extra points. I mean, in some stadiums, we're talking about the 12th man or a woman as a, a cliche. You don't do that here. They are kind of pushing them forward. And this dynamic between the team uh, and, the, uh, and, the, and the crowd is unbelievable, as the boys know. Uh, Chat, you've got the freedom of the city, obviously. Yeah. 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 What, what, so what? what are your expectations? Um, top six. And how will that affect your wallet? <laughs> uh, Top six. <laughs> well, that in fact, be, they won't be affected in any way. Dad no. won't change us. It'll no. still be empty. <laughs> well, regardless I'm, of where they put it. All these college fees. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, dear heavens. I That's why I'm watching college soccer. No. <laughs> I always, when I was at Newcastle, early to bed. Jan's in Newcastle in some random hotel. You <laughs> are an expert on late night places to go. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. 
Jagger. Yeah, no. <laughs> you must have. If you want a, re a recommendation on where to go for a little late drinky poos. Which means midnight. That's yeah. just early. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> no, I'm going out afterwards now. I'm, I'm going to say, I know Shaka Hislo. Yeah, this is exactly. going to be my first. Yeah, this is yeah. my first line now. Yeah. You know when you're walking around Newcastle now, I don't know if you've been since you've been given the freedom in the city, but you walk in a bar and you just go, I don't pay. Yeah. I don't yeah. care right here. I'm the mayor. I'm the mayor of Newcastle yeah, and I have the it. freedom to go behind the bar yeah. and pull a pint. Yeah. <laughs> pull a pint for yourself. <laughs> 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 and for Craig. <laughs> <laughs> get me one of your little lads, uh, Guinness. To the panel, how much should the outcome of a tackle affect a yellow red card decision? For example, would Trippier's red card have stood if De Bruyne ended up injured? Yes, it should. I, 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 I think... I have no issue. So when, when as the boys would, would, would know, when we were playing, we had a saying, leave a little bit on someone, right? right? So it's the tackle, you're not really going to hurt somebody or not going to hurt them badly, but you're just <coughs> letting them know that they're there, that they're here. But, and, but if you go to leave a little bit on somebody and you leave a little bit too much, right. I have no problem with that being red or... Right. What was, the, what was the red card in the Arsenal game quite a few years ago? The famous one? No, yeah, uh, Aaron Ramsey. Uh, because uh, Peter Walton was officiating that. Uh, yes, our former that. colleague. Who and and he said, once he saw it, they said that was it. It's a red card. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah, well, it was a compound fracture. Yeah. Uh, bone out the leg. Oh, good grief. But, yeah. Horrible. But I think that what Shaka is saying, I mean, yes, I felt the same when I saw the tackle. I thought, now, this is not a red, it's a yellow, it's a thing but i think that this situation will be discussed among referees because where is the limit i right. mean we as former footballers we may say that well it didn't hurt him it just stopped him and trippier didn't try to do that and all that kind of thing but i isolated scene it was a tackle that stopped the player in knee height yes in the dressing room we would always see that wasn't so worrying but there is no, nothing in the rules, many, many paragraphs saying the degree of injuries and, and what's, hap what's happening afterwards. I, I, I predict that this will be discussed, very much so. The trouble, the, the, the trouble is with cynical challenges, and that was cynical, but didn't seem on second view particularly dangerous. Although I can understand the referee at full speed. Uh, going for the red, but then he got it right. But the, the difficulty is, is where, where do you draw the line with... Yeah. Uh, I, I know you're not going to get an injury, but if, if Kevin De Bruyne is away and I pull his shot, mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's just as cynical. No, it's not going to It's not going to cause an injury. A challenge might, a cynical challenge could, but it's still cynicism of the highest order. Where do you draw, I don't we, know where we, you draw we the We had line this with. discussion, and I'm trying to remember exactly how long ago it was. Um, song on, who was it, against Everton, Human Son. Yes. Oh, and yeah. there was and a, I, 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 Andre Gomez. Correct. Yes. I, I remember at the time, I, I, said, I said, I thought Son was just going to leave a little bit on him, but it, because of how his, his leg got caught, etc., the injury ended up being much worse than it was. And I think I'm right in saying that that red card was, was rescinded on, on, on review, which, again, I, I even if you're just going to leave a little bit on, you're not going to end anybody's career or have them out for months or, or, or let alone years. Just a few weeks. But I, I think if that happens, if that's a result of, of a petulant challenge, I have no problem with you no, seeing never, seeing red. No, oh, I never... I wonder if they're still having these conversations in the dressing room. I'm going to smash him. Oh yeah, I bet they are. I'm going to, I'd, never, I'd be almost I, disappointed I, 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 if they are. To be honest, I never ever intended to make a challenge to wreck somebody's career. No. Right. But by God, I wanted to hurt them. Right. Sometimes. Yeah. But and they used to do it to us. So I'm going to, as Shaka said, leave it on them. Leave it in there a little late. Smash them. But all these things, it's like, it's just wrong, isn't it? <laughs> well, that, never, it's, it's wrong. So, yeah. so much about us is wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah. For Shaka. But Jackie, Jackie, oh. Jackie Charlton, the World Cup winner and uh, the brother of. Bobby and the Irish national coach. He had a book, didn't he? <laughs> he wrote up the names that he needed some revenge on. I don't wow. think they do that to, today. Yeah, no. But I think no, that I just to end that, dis end that dis discussion with, with my view on that, I think it's a lot of, of the speed Trippier is coming into that. I mean, the speed must have something to do with how serious the tackle is, I guess. But 
as I said, I think this will be discussed. For Shaka, Edward Mendy has been caught out a few times trying to play out from the back. Should Tuchel give him authority to clear his lines if he feels in danger, or is it keeping tactics more important yes. to the team? Yes. Jan is absolutely right. I think I think every goalkeeper should have authority. Well, they should have authority anyway. So, exactly. I, 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 I don't get it. And and in many ways, I wonder if this has been a long time coming for Edward Mendy and Chelsea. A lot of times, I, I think they'd right on the edge with yeah. this wanting to, to constantly play the ball out of the back. Now, on the one hand, you say, OK, I'll take, I'll take the errors. Um, if it costs us three or four goals a season, if building out from the back, we score nine or ten. Yep. Um, so you, you take that on your chin and, and, and you move on. But it, when, it, when the margins are that thin, it always makes me a little bit nervous. I've got a question. I, Go didn't, I didn't send it into extra time. Oh, well, you, I you, you, you've got was, to send it in. I was, <laughs> I, 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 it I was in. watching the golf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although, I, I do admit, now on reflection, I have uh, actually watched the golf on my phone here. Yes, I know. I don't know why you're <laughs> pretending that you hadn't. Some <laughs> people don't know. <laughs> You talk about it. Look, look, you watch a right. golf here, you talk look, look, about Jack, it. Now he's come clean. He's <laughs> <It's> pure now. <laughs> That's it. It's confession time. Right, what question do you want to ask? I was looking over at your uh, jacket. Yes. And I've got a sneaky feeling. No, you're okay. Okay. No, not quite. What's happening? Uh, I've got a sneaky feeling that's a, a Stevie Chief you've got. <laughs> yeah, but it's designed to be a Stevie Chief. No, it's not. It's a Stevie Chief. It's no, not, it's not a, a Stevie chief. chief. It's not a pocket Chief. He can take his out. No, no, you need to let people know what's a Stevie Chief. No, no, you've pulled let, in. Let people know what the Stevie Chief is. A Stevie is. Chief <laughs> is a pocket Chief. Uh, a Stevie Chief is the in line of a he pocket. He just put his hand inside his pocket and ripped the line out and hung it outside. No, but this is purpose. This is on purpose. This is the way it's designed. I think you've just draped your fingers in. Ready to. I'm with you. I'm with you. Dan, so Dan, could, I, could I just, Dave, as we are talking about other things than the questions in right. next time, could I have, no. could I have, could I, no, I, wa I want, no, I want to, I, I, I'm with Craig, I haven't Spencer been for a while now, so. <laughs> So I was a seller spark. This is from the archive. I've said it before. I know. He saw but, it. <laughs> yeah, and it was so good. But this guy said to me, "Yan, Yan, Yan." Never seen him before during the game, and he said, "Come here." And I went over to him and said, "Tell Craig Burley not so be so mad and angry at the TV <laughs> during a Premier League game." Got, yeah. You're famous, Craig. Got, You're famous. I've got friends all over. Yeah, friends is a strange <laughs> word. I've got, got, got acquaintances and friends. I said, yeah. "Tell him." I'm asking for him. Yep. Tell that. Yes. Tell him. Tell him. I know. Tell him. Tell him. <laughs> Who's been the biggest surprise in the Prem so far, Craig? Leeds, Brighton or Arsenal? Mm. Uh, Leeds drew last week. They won a match they won. Yeah, Leeds are on seven points. Brighton are on seven points. Arsenal are yeah. on nine. Well, Brighton, I think Graham Potter is, you know, I think he's a very good manager. I think right. a, lot, a lot of people think he's a very good manager. So, that, not a huge surprise. Uh, Arsenal with the teams have played no, but even though Stevie doesn't think so, I think it was a good win at Selhurst Park, <laughs> really good win. I'm going to say a little surprise that Leeds have had a positive start. Yeah, yeah, big start. Bear in mind, uh, Phillips and Rafinha yeah. were gone. Very positive. Yeah, very, Leeds. very much indeed. Leeds. Stevie Chief. Seeing teams mm. like Leeds pressing con continuously. It's, it's designed that way. How? As if he ever buys designer gear. <laughs> How? Just, ha hey, just, hey, excuse I'll me, just, have you got one of those jackets with the uh, could, designer gear? I can put my pocket out. I can, I can just let my pocket hang out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, don't encourage him. Have you ever just because you've got a new shirt on today, yeah. don't start. It's still got the, it's still got the crease well, design. Well, of course I had a new shirt on. His daughter was playing. He was, <laughs> he was, he was <laughs> I've never seen him. I'm so excited about the game. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> right, go on. Uh, where are we? Question. Is your wardrobe okay? Sorry? Is your wardrobe okay? My wardrobe? Well, my wardrobe is a wooden wardrobe. It's got two doors. I, I, I just meant the contents of it. Is it still fitting okay, considering? Yeah, no, it doesn't actually. No, right. it doesn't fit me. Right. So that's why I've branched out. I have, I have, I, and my... Uh, <laughs> I'm having some uh, problems at the moment with my expenses <laughs> and codes, but I've submitted it anyway because I really don't need stuff. Right. However, my wardrobe now consists, this is the thing, you can't be a 3-4-3 right. or a 4-3-3 three, three, okay. or a 4 two, three, one. You have to have all these formations. So what have you got now? A corset? 40 regular. Right. right? <laughs> and 42 regular. Oh, I see. Uh, and also coming in with a 16 inch neck right, on okay. the shirt. For the fluctuation. Well, yeah, but I've also got 15 and a half sitting right. waiting. Okay. And I'm saying to them, be patient. 
patience. <laughs> patience. I'll, I'll get to you. You'll get a game. You'll get a game. And then the 16s will One shit day. The one si- day. One day. Next year, you're going to play for about three months this year. 15 and a half inch neck. Right. Then the, the 16 inch neck, which I've got on now. Okay. Looking a little tight. A little bit. <laughs> don't, don't swallow. Don't swallow. Whatever you do. I think I was a little bit ambitious when, when the guy when, when the guy when the guy in the shop put the uh, put the tape around me. He went uh, seventeen. I was sixteen. <laughs> Anyway, couldn't measure it. So it's gone. He said, what he said, said to me? This is my cream. He said, can you, get, can, you say, can you get two fingers down? I said, I can do it, but open it up like that. Can you get two fingers down? Oh, dear. Anyway. So, <laughs> there's a mix. Oh, so, uh, so I'm branching between the 15 and a half. Right. And the 16 inch. Good. Right, okay. Okay, I'm good flexible. Good. Uh, seeing teams like Leeds pressing continuously, how has the game changed? Hold on, it's crazy. Just leave it up. That's right. Just just leave leave it up. It up. It's no, too painful for us. How has it changed since we, you played, Jan? Seeing uh, Leeds press. Well, I. I think I would have to start with Craig's tie pressing continuously. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I remember when I came to England back in the, in the old days when Churchill was the Prime Minister, uh, there was a time when I asked her, where did, should we start pressing? This is from Swindon Town. We were just a newly promoted Premier League team and we went to Sweden in a training camp at pre-season and they were just laughing. We are pressing all over the pitch. But I, I think it's a bit more organised now. So there, there are trends in football, and I don't. Sometimes we we try to say that the new things in football are so new. We've seen teams pressing all over the pitch before, and for all in British football and in English football. But uh, so I don't think you can compare it. Absolutely goes quicker now than it did back in the days. The 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 players are fitter than they were back in the days. But we were still doing some pressing also, but a bit more disorganised, I would I would uh, say. Final question. Jan, did you or other strikers get annoyed when other players pinch goals right off their toes, like with Valverde and Benzema yesterday? So they just take take my goal? Yes. Yeah, pinch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely, and I pinched some in my life, but if someone pinched mine, I was mad. Oh. Uh, and I, I, I think that a coach, to be honest, the most important thing is not to score goals. The most important thing is that the goal getters are getting enough goals. I mean, you don't have a great system if you keep having the defenders or the midfielders scoring all the time. Tell that to Phil Foden now. <laughs> Give the ball to Alan Holland. He oh, is the one. I'm going to go up for Phil Foden, Jan. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, Jan's, on a, Jan's on a goal just, bonus. Uh, Jan's on a Harlan, Harlan yeah. goal bonus. Harlan, we, even if it's a percent. We, yes. don't, mm-hmm. don't, don't, don't start again. Don't start again. Get some... Uh, <laughs> uh, good, good. Get a good fit suit in the studio before you start having a go of me sitting lonely in a hotel room in Newcastle waiting for the freedom man Shaka Hislop to turn uh, up and take me out. Uh, are you going to order breakfast behind you, Jan? Are you going to have it in bed? Yeah, I will. <laughs> no, I won't talk at extra time what I'm going to have in bed. Sorry, I can't tell you. That is it then. That brings us to the end of extra time. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Why did I ask that? Why did I ask that? <laughs> uh, we will be back tomorrow to reflect on Manchester United against uh, Liverpool. <laughs> what size I'll shirt will Craig be wearing? <laughs> 15 and a half. I'm going 15 and a half tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>